Hello and welcome on another video about Vilt PWA. My name is Simone Cuomo and today I'm going to show you how to create a refresh pop-up to allow your user to refresh their offline ready application. Uh, if this is the first video, uh, there are more videos on our channel that you can look at that helps you on actually getting started with this project. And you can also use the actual documentation that is um, here on at vit-pwa-org.netlify. Uh, today we're going to learn how to um, uh, how the service worker works when and the file works your website works when the information are updated. Uh, until now, if you've never used PWA, you update your sites, you push the sites up. As soon as you refresh the page, you will see the updated content. That's really the norm. That's what everyone has learned. But unfortunately, when you install PWA, that's not the case. What is what it actually means is that if the application changes those changes will not actually be referred and showed on the user. Let me give you an example. This file was built at 14.18. So as you can see, there is a string there. And if I refresh the page, it always says 14.18. If we go on our project, and it's just a simple, simple view project with just a few changes that I'm going to explain, and I build the project again, and I go back to my app, now I'm expecting this to be different. What you can see is that is not different. This has nothing to do with the build. The build works fine and the files are ready if you go and access them. But if we open up our application, you see that there's a running service worker and there's another one that is waiting to be downloaded. What happens is that until we can tell the application, yes, go ahead and take the new service worker, the file that will be served here, so the, type, the JavaScript file, the CSS and the logo, they will all be provided from the service worker. That means that the application will never know that it's a new file. So the service worker really sits in the middle and, and, and decides when to show. So if I do, for example, if I click on the skip waiting here and I refresh the page, so before it was 14.18, if I refresh the page, you see that it's 14.35. So you can see now that the date is actually changed. I don't know why the logo changed. I must have done some changes there. Okay. So um, what we're doing, we're providing the ability for the user to uh, refresh. Uh, you can actually set it to auto refresh, but this is not really suggested because if a user, out, if we auto refresh a service worker, every single tab that have your application open will refresh. Now, if you have a blog post or something that is read only, that's fine. There's no problem whatsoever. But if you have an application, so something with the user input upload or as any state, like a scrolling state or something, it's not suggested because the user will lose all the information that they had. So it's always better to have a nice update. And the update actually tells them, hey, we created, there's a new, um, uh, there's new version of the site, a new version of the app. So it's really beneficial to do it. Let's go and build it and see how to do so. So we're going to create a new component. So we're going components with a new file and we call it refresh service worker of view. Then we're going to take this file and we're going to import it in our Okay, we import it in our app to view file and then we just load it. This file is not going to show all the time, it's just going to show in specific instances. Uh, within this file, we're going to do our we're going to start the script script setup template and last but not least uh, okay. um, the first thing we're doing is we are importing a virtual module so what is a virtual module is um, something that is provided by Vit um, and is the ability to actually um, um, you know uh, imports a file that are actually just provided a build time so you can read more here. I'm going to share this, this in the show notes. Uh, but the ability is that it allows you to use something that doesn't actually exist um, until you actually build the application. So by putting the virtual, it tells the, it tells the website, it tells the app to say, hey, wait until this is actually built. Uh, and this is a, a user register service worker. So it takes the information from the service worker itself. And from that, we're going to use, um, uh, we're going to use uh, two different, um, two different properties. We're going to use the first one that is called need refresh. 
need refresh is going to be triggered when the application knows that there's a new service worker. So if we go back in our app, every time that this one, there is a little line with, an, with, an, with the new updates, um, that's when the need refresh will trigger. And the second one is a method that we can call to tell our application to actually update the service worker. So this is gonna be our on-click event. So when the user say, okay, updates, you can do it. Then the actual content of the, um, of the component is gonna be quite simple. Um, we're gonna have a, um, a simple div that is a role of alert. And this is gonna say, it's just gonna show if we do need the refresh. Uh, then um, what we'll do is that if we if the user clicks reload, we actually trigger the reload service worker. Now we're going to save this. We're going to build our app, and now when we go back to our application and refresh, you will notice that no pop up is showing up. Go back to what we said before, I build the app. So this information, so this new view component and everything else is in the new version of the app. So it's not gonna show until I force an update. So that component and everything else is in this version, but this is the one we got here. So I need to click the, uh, click the skip waiting, just so you know. So uh, skip waiting, we refresh, and even if the application, even if the component doesn't is not showing right now, the component is being loaded. How do we know that? Well, let's make a change. Let's make a little change to the app and build the game. As everything, when we build it, it also creates a new service worker. And when we go back to the app and somebody uh, go on the application again, you'll notice that there is a waiting to activate. So there is a new service worker. And as soon as the new serv service worker trigger, then we also have um, um, our information. So, you know, this, this variance style div that actually show here. Okay. If I click, um, um, if I uh, click on reload, the application will then reload. So look at the time, 14.39. I can refresh as many times as you want and it's still 14.39. As soon as I click reload, it's actually going to trigger a reloaded app, the new service broker and everything else loads and the application is loaded, great. Let's 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 give another insight. Let's give a let's give another example to understand how things works now. So by providing this, we give the ability for the user and ourselves to update the app. That means even if we do change an application and we do build, nothing loads until we actually load the application. To actually show that, we're going to put a little bit of style on our application. We're going to save. We're going to build. As I go back in the application and refresh, nothing will show, so the time is still the same, and not even the style will show yet because those will be provided in the new version of the site. But funny enough, let's do this. Let's create. Let's open up a a dev version of the site. So the dev version dev version doesn't care about the uh, the PWA. It's always going to download the file straight away. Um, so this version you can see as a fourteen forty two while this one has a 14.40. So if I refresh it, you see now that the version has been updated, okay? And now the, the plugin will actually have um, um, a new style. So, you know, just to show you, I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm gonna go here, refresh the page again, and now it should actually store a style. St as you can see, it shows a styled version at the bottom line. So what we've done now, we start to learn how things work, on a dev environment, you're not gonna have this problem because most of your, um, everything you will you will work on is gonna be on the fly. So as you can see the time now, it says 42, um, 1442. Um, and if I go, uh, oh yeah, if I make any change, as soon as I make the changes and this reloads, as soon as I go here, you see that this is actually, um, It's not, oh, because it's, um, it's using a build. Apologies, this is not gonna update. But application in a dev environment actually works fine and uploads. So you're not gonna have any problem regarding the, the dev environment. But you, you are gonna have problem on understanding how things works 
as you go in production, as you push this to your user. So your user is still gonna use old version of the code unless they click this reload. And this is important because you can make breaking changes, but it's also hard because you need to have a different frame of mind of how things need to be done and how need, need, they need to be developed. So just a very quick reminder that you can go here on application service worker and you can actually bypass for network if you don't want to use a service worker locally. And you can also force like a skip updates, network requests and so on and so forth. So there are things that you can do behind the scene for you to actually update application if necessary. So let's do reload one more time. And you can see now that the application is reloaded and has a new time. Thank you for watching. This program is presented by This.Labs, the framework agnostic consulting firm helping enterprises realize their technical goals through staff augmentation, consulting, project management, on-demand subject experts, training, and other professional services. Find out more at this.labs.com.